is there big news from China stock market today? The Nasdaq Golden Dragon China Index went up 5.5% before closing up 4.3%, marking the biggest increase since February and breaking through the 7,100 mark. Lots of Chinese concept stocks also saw gains. What caused this surge, you may ask? July Political Bureau Economic War Conference, which emphasized the need to boost the capital market. I think this is the main reason why uh, we can see some gains from the stock market. And this is the first time the topic has been brought up thanks to the Financial Committee's similar statement back in April 2020. Experts are interpreting this as a policy bottom for the bear market since 2021. But what does this mean for Chinese assets and how should we be investing in them? Well, I'm a stock analyst based in China and I'm trading stocks too. If you don't want to miss any useful information about Chinese concept stocks, please follow my channel and turn on the little bell. Now, let's we dive into it. There's been a long-held market saying policy bottom, market bottom, and economic bottom. But what's the difference between these three types of bottoms? Firstly, policy bottom. When the macro economy weakens and the market declines, the market usually expects the government to stimulate the economy through a series of policies, such as monetary and fiscal policies. When these policies are implemented, like interest rate cards, and the market can be boosted. This phenomenon of prompting up the market through macro policies is called as a, a policy bottom. Some experts speculate that China's asset market might be in this phase right now. The second one, sentiment bottom. As Warren Buffett once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when the others are fearful. This reflects the market sentiment. A sentiment bottom can be understood as investors being extremely pessimistic about the market's future trend. This can be reflected in a decrease in the number of new stock trading accounts and a lack of enthusiasm for public mutual funds. Thirdly, market bottom. The market bottom refers to the lowest point of the market index during a period of downturn trend. For example, when the Shanghai uh, Composite Index fell below 3,000 points on October 10, 2022 and then rebounded, the drop below 3,000 points can be considered as a market bottom at that time. Even after approaching the policy bottom and sentiment bottom, the market may still have the potential to further decline. And when the market sentiment is extremely pessimistic, it may not immediately turn for the better. In some sense, compared with policy bottom and sentiment bottom, the market bottom is a real bottom. However, the market bottom is surely not a single point, but an interval, I mean, um, it's not a very short point, but a, a relatively long period. This means that the market may go through a process of a repeated grinding before it turns around. There's a lot of up and downs. So just because we are experiencing a decline now doesn't necessarily mean that it's the lowest point for the index. Moreover, looking at this phenomenon from a real view perspective, it seems to repeat itself cyclically. But the reason is uh, always different, you know. Sometimes the interval between the bottoms is longer, and sometimes it's just a shorter. So when it comes to this market saying, the best approach is to strike a balance between accuracy and correctness with a fuzzy line of what's truly correct. This brings us to the battle between economic energy and policy support. The starting point of the three bottom framework lies in two basic facts. The first one is economy is in a downwards trend, and second one is the government starts propping up the economy. Behind these two factors are two independent forces, economic inertia and the government support. 
These two forces act in opposite directions on the economy with their strengths in changing over time. Specifically, the strengthens of economic inertia weakens over time, while the strength of policy support strengthens over time. As a result, the economic situation will be exhibit the following trend. According to this framework, there will be a certain time lag between the policy bottom and economic bottom, with a critical point eventually appearing when the two forces are equal. In summary, it's clear that the process from the policy bottom to the economic bottom is an extremely long and winding one, with a lot of uncertainties involved. These uncertainties include the uncertain pace of policy intervention, the uncertain timing of the economic bottom, the uncertain industries that will bottom out first, and the uncertain race events that may occur in between. While we know that the market bottom is sandwiched between the policy bottom and economic bottom, so judging by the boost from the July 24th meeting, the stock market performance on the next day was pretty good. This year, stock market saw a significant increase too. Now, analysts aren't focused on specific policy matters, but rather the direction set for the second half of the year in China. We can draw a conclusion that the Central Political Bureau meeting held in later July every year is a key meeting that sets the direction of policies for second half of the year in China. The meeting doesn't release any big movements, but acknowledge the insufficient domestic demand and economic growth difficulties strengthen counter-political policy adjustment and push for high-quality development, showing the courage to face reality. After all, the meeting gave the overall impression that the focus had shifted from risk prevention to promoting growth. We can see that China's news has impacted global markets with Asia stock raising and dollar index falling during the Asian session. And now let's get into the specific policy adjustments made at the meeting. And I will highlight some important points for you. The first one is there was significant change in the wording regarding the real estate sector, which the market saw as a signal of loosening of real estate policies. The release now says like that we should adapt to the new situation where the relationship between supply and demand in the real estate market has undergone significant changes and timely adjusted the optimized real estate policies. Secondly, the meeting proposed a positive statement of uh, activating the capital market with the securities and insurance sectors raising significantly today. Thirdly, the wording for continually to implement proactive fiscal policy and prudent monetary policy did not change significantly implying that they won't be a strong stimulus. Fourth one, the meeting specifically mentioned like uh, maintaining the basic stability of the RMB exchange rate as a reasonable and balanced level, showing a positive attitude to prevent excessive depreciation of RMB. The central bank set RMB midpoint price today much stronger than the market expected in line with meeting's promise. Fifth one, looking at the key policy areas, the July statement emphasizes supporting consumption, especially in the EV area, electronics, and uh, harm-related sectors, as well as in sports, entertainment, and culture consumption. Some consumption measures have already been announced. So, based on this information, how do you judge China's economic situation and the operating phase of the capital market? Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section to discuss together. Finally, I want to say that although the road is windy, I believe that the future is bright. Once the policy bottom is established, it's time to be optimistic, maintaining confidence in the economy and the market. In this case, time is friend, not enemy. If you want to get a deeper insight of my report, you can just click the link below my video and join my membership. 
If you want to invest in China, subscribe my channel and get the latest perspective of the equity research.